Zoo. There's family fun for everyone at the Unica Zoo. Hello everyone, I'm Kathleen and today we're going to be talking a little bit about birds and to get us started for our week's lesson I'm going to introduce you guys to Grace. Now Grace is our bard owl here at the zoo um, and she actually has a very unique story, a very special story um, for some of the animals that we have here. Um, Grace is actually a rescue from the wild. Unfortunately she did get into an accident a few years ago and as a result one of her wings was very very badly damaged. Um, and unfortunately, Grace can no longer fly. Now, before she came to live here at the zoo, she actually spent some time at an animal rehabilitation center. Now, their job there is to take in animals like Grace who are injured or other animals sometimes when they're very young and get lost from mom or dad and to get them well enough to get them better in hopes to re-release them into the wild. But unfortunately, because of how severe Grace's injury was and that she wouldn't be able to fly, she wouldn't have been able to survive out in the wild if she was released again. And so they made the decision to try to find a home for her. And luckily here at the zoo, we had a place just for her and we've had her ever since. Now, since Grace is a rescue from the wild, we don't know exactly how old she is, but we think that she's somewhere in her mid-teens, um, which is kind of older for an owl. Owls can usually live about 20 years, sometimes a little bit longer in a place like a zoo where they're very well cared for. Um, but they don't live quite as long as some other types of birds, um, like parrots, for example, that can actually live into their 80s, 90s, sometimes even to 100 years old. So there are some birds out there that live a very, very long time. Um, now, barred owls are a type of owl that we can find around here. In fact, you can find them pretty much throughout the northeast part of our country. Um, but you can find them definitely in New York State, um, and that's actually where she used to live, was right in New York as well. Um, and they have a very distinctive color, they have a very distinctive pattern, and they also have a very distinctive sound. So even if you don't necessarily see her because of her feathers, she has really, really great camouflage, a lot of the times you can hear the call that a barred owl makes and know that it's a barred owl just by listening to the sound. Now she's called the barred owl because if you take a look at her pattern, you can see that she's kind of got these little brown bars of color that go down her body. So that's actually what she's named after is the pattern or the color that she has. Um, and like I said before, it really does help them to camouflage in the woods and sometimes they even live in kind of woody swamps where these guys like to live. Now, barred owls are predators, they are meat eaters, and they tend to really like really small rodents, any kind of really small mammal that they can catch. But sometimes if they can't find things like that, they might eat other things like frogs and other smaller animals as well. And one of the things that I think is really, really cool about the barred owl, or about owls in general, is that they have really, really good senses. And you can really see that. If Grace will, will let me turn her around a little bit, her eyes are very, very big. And if you take a look at this model that we have, this is actually of a great horned owl skull. You can see that they kind of got really, really big openings for the eyes, but their eyes pretty much just fit right in. They can't really move their eyes around too much inside their head. So unlike us, owls can't use what we call peripheral vision, which means that we can't, we can, she can't, we can look straight ahead but still look side to side without moving our head. But her eyes don't do that. Her eyes are pretty much fixed in her head, which is why owls need to turn their heads around in order to see in different directions. Now, Grace here cannot turn her head a whole 360 degrees, a whole full circle. She can usually do about 270 degrees, so pretty far around. And that's really important so that she can see a lot more around her since she can't move her eyes. The other sense that owls have a really good sense of is their ears. And even though we can't see her ears underneath these feathers here, she does have ears. And a lot of owls actually have ears that kind of look a little funky. They have one ear that's kind of towards the top of their head and one ear that's a little bit lower. And that actually helps them not only to hear things from different directions, different angles, it also helps them to pinpoint where their food is or where another animal might be. Because even though these guys are predators, they're mostly looking for food, they also have to be aware of the other birds and the other kinds of dangers around them. Because they come out at night, for the most part, these guys don't need to worry about too much other than owls that are larger than them and other bigger animals that live on the ground. So things like the great horned owl would definitely be a problem for a girl like Grace. Not necessarily because they would fight, but sometimes even just for making sure that everybody has enough food to go around. They don't want to have to compete with a bigger owl to get food. Um, so a lot of the times if a barred owl knows that there's a great horned owl nearby, they'll try to kind of move away or stay away from them for sure. Um, 
Now, because Grace is a little bit different, she is a rescue, and actually many of our animals here are rescues, not only some of our birds of prey, like our bald eagles and Grace, we also have our sea lions here, our red fox are also rescues. Um, it's important to remember that sometimes there are situations where an animal might get injured or might get hurt, or you might see an animal on its own and it might not seem quite right. Now, the best thing that you can do if you see an animal and you're not sure what to do, a wild animal that's hurt or might be in distress, the best thing to do is to call a wildlife rehabber. We have many, many, many in New York State that can help that actually specialize in many different kinds of animals. So they can help you or kind of point you in the direction with another rehabber if you have an animal that they don't have as much experience with handling. Um, and if you're not sure, if you don't know where to find a rehabber's number, um, you can always contact us here at the zoo and we'd be happy to help. We actually have a list of different rehabbers that we can um, give to you so that you know where to go or um, who to call if you have an animal and you're not sure what to do. But the best advice that I can give is definitely if you ever see a wild animal, the best thing to do is to leave them alone. Don't touch them. Don't do anything to them until you get some help, until you talk to somebody so you know what to do. Because sometimes some of the things that we can do can actually make the problem a little bit worse. So it's best to get some advice to get some help before doing anything else. Well, thank you guys again for stopping by and joining, to, joining us to meet Grace. And be sure to check out our website at uticazoo.org slash kazoo so you can see some other owl activities and bird activities that we have up there. And hopefully in the near future, you guys will be able to book an animal encounter with us here at the zoo and maybe meet a girl like Grace or some of our other birds of prey that live here at the Utica Zoo. Thanks so much.